Hi guys, welcome to our channel. This is Rosanna and Mark from All Gift Smarter. And today we're just going to show you our setup and a little demonstration of our how we use our microwave kilns. Uh, so yeah, without wasting any time, let's just get right into it. So here we are. First of all, we're just gonna show you our equipment. So this is our microwave and inside we actually have a very small kiln shelf instead of the glass plate. And I'm sorry, that it has been used a long time for doing this stuff, so it's, it still works, but yeah, it's not in the best condition. Anyway, so we use that instead of a glass plate that comes with the microwave, first of all. And then here, we have our microwave kiln. The microwave kiln is basically made of ceramic fiber. Um, we have a big one, and I'm actually currently waiting for another big one to be delivered. And we have two small ones. Now, these kilns have been around for a long time. Uh, mainly, uh, people use it for glass fusing. Uh, and I have done that myself. And the inside is coated with graphite, which is what heats up in the microwave and reaches really high temperatures. Now, these are, as I said, ceramic fiber. So they're very dusty. So always use safety always make i mean this this studio this setup is outdoor so it's it's not too bad but if i mean i do recommend not to do it indoor anyway but anyway if you do it indoor you want to use a, a mask a respirator mask and always have glasses on when you're dealing with glowing with glowing things uh, you know when glowing pieces are glowing you want safety glasses in case of shutter with the shock or whatever, you know, always have safety glasses on. And also the heat, of course, you want to use gloves. Right, so the simple way to use it for small items is basically put your item at the bottom of, what, the bottom piece of the kiln and then put that over the top, right? But that might be too, uh, big for the small kiln and you can see that you see the head sticks out of it on the top so what I do when I want to fire bigger pieces I turn the big kiln upside down and because there is no graphite at the actual on the roof of the kiln you can just place your item there and then get another kiln top. That's another kiln top and put it over the top of it. Now, you want to avoid these holes being uncovered because, it, because it's high, it reaches almost the top of the microwave but you don't want that to melt. So I have a little piece of ceramic fiber and I just put that over the hole and then nothing happens and then nothing melts you see on the, the microwave the bottom hole doesn't matter because I have a kiln shelf in there so that's covered and that's basically how we do bigger items now every microwave in terms of time is different i do suggest a microwave that's a thousand uh wattage uh output uh, but 800 and 900 will also um, work but you need longer time now when you do use this system to do big item you also need longer time because the chamber is bigger and so you need more longer to heat to, you know to reach a high temperature because you will reach you, you will reach a thousand degrees in in there um so yeah now 
we're just gonna do a little demo with the only piece that I have it's a little whistle bird so that's that so yeah the best thing is to experiment with your own microwave and your own kiln and I would do it in increments of five minutes you can do a preheat uh, just the kiln on its own for five minutes and then you put your piece in so you know you, you do a little preheat make sure your piece uh, the glaze is dry and yeah just do increments of five minutes and see what works for you like for me in this case I usually fire my pieces for 20 minutes and then an extra five or ten minutes um, after that and that seems to to work for me so but we leave this in there now and we'll get back to you when it's ready to go in the bucket so we're back the 20 minutes are nearly gone so we are going to put it on for an extra five before we take it out of the kiln so here goes the extra five there you go and then when it's ready mark is gonna have his glasses on and the heat proof gloves there we go and tongs you need some tongs you can either get i mean this is just a nice ice tongue from, from a bar, I mean, you know, anything like metal. You can also have a big one. This is actually for a fireplace, but it works. It was only uh, very inexpensive, actually. And then I have a big bag of shredded paper right here. That's where all my shredded documents go. There you are. And then we have our bucket with shredded paper in and the lid and what I usually do I put some paper on there as well so when I shut the lid then it's all done I've got my combustible but you can also use I don't know sawdust and wood shavings leaves dry leaves you know whatever uh, I heard people use uh, cotton wool as well not tried it personally but I might so that's that is going in there and then I have a bucket with water so that after maybe five minutes that it's been in that the piece has been in there I will take it out and put it in the bucket of water and hope for the best Right, here we go. Seven seconds, five seconds to go. Mark has his heat gloves on and his glasses, and we are good to go. So, we are taking the whole kiln close to the bucket on a little marble. What we're looking for is for smooth glow. Okay? It has to be smooth if it's bumpy it's not hot enough then we place it in there and in it goes and then we wait for five minutes so this is happening this is a, a reduction process so the reason you need a, a tight fitting lid is to cut out any oxygen and you can do the reduction process properly yeah and everything that's not glazed um, you know the raw ceramic will turn black because of the reduction which is awesome because you can actually create some really nice effect using uh, just not glazing certain parts of your piece so that's pretty cool so five minutes gone ready to open it Woo! smoky 
then we're gonna find our little bird and gently a little bit at the time because it's a whistle and it's hollow will make some really strange noises because of the heat it's a trumpet whistle right there <laughs> After this, we are just going to wash it and scrub it with a little kitchen cloth. What you want to do as well is put the lid back on your bucket, then the oxygen stops it from turning into a full fire. Yeah, that's true. And there we go. And this is how we do it. Here's a little kitchen sponge. Let's give it a good wipe. Got a bit of old uh, black uh, paper, burnt paper. And it should be good to go. And with any luck, it'll still whistle. Sure it will. Right, let's have a look. Yay! Hold it in your hand. And there he is. Oh, he's cute. All good. 